Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back on my channel. My name is Larissa and in today's video we are going to talk about the best travel itinerary for Barcelona part 2. If you haven't checked my other video, I'm gonna link it in the description box below. Please go check it out. If you're planning a trip to Barcelona, I can guarantee you that this is one of the best itineraries that you can find. And uh, why am I saying this? Well, because I used to live in Barcelona, I have lived there for a full year, I also worked as a hotel concierge and receptionist, and trust me, I've tried the best spots to hang out, to eat, to see, to photograph, to visit, to explore, like I've been everywhere in the city, and I've seen it from a tourist perspective, from a concierge perspective, from someone that needs to recommend places to people in a four-star hotel, um, from a local because I also lived there so I, I feel like I've explored the city from multiple angles that kind of like give me now the knowledge of sharing all these informations with you. In the previous video we've talked about the first three nights of your stay in Barcelona and they were about the Gaudi houses, Parkway, uh, the Gothic neighborhood, restaurants and in those areas and also Sagrada Familia, the famous Hospital de San Paul Museum, uh, Barceloneta Beach, some uh, tapas lunches, so we've talked about many things. So now part two of the video we are starting with day number four in the city which is gonna be about Montjuic. Montjuic is a hill um, inside of Barcelona and from there you get an awesome awesome view of the city but more than that you have a castle to visit, you have the National Art Museum of Catalonia to visit, you have the stadium where the Olympic Games were held in 1992 you have some beautiful gardens so let's start with the first thing you need to go early in the morning to Plaza España from Plaza de España you can either walk up Montjuic or take a bus but another option would be for you to get a cable car the cable car is from Torre de San Sebastián you can buy the ticket online it is 11 euros the cable car will take you from this tower that is located on the beach all the way up to the mountain next to the castle so then you do not need to take a bus or walk or anything it is very very straightforward uh, more expensive but you also get a very beautiful view overlooking the sea and the mountain from down all the way to the top and then from the top you just have a view overlooking um, the seaside of Barcelona. If you don't want to take a cable car, um, if you don't want to walk from Plaza España because it is like probably 45 minutes to one hour to walk all the way to the um, to the castle, you can also take a funicular from Parallel Metro stop. There is a direct funicular, it's like five minutes and it takes you all the way up very close to the castle. So once you are there, you have the castles and the garden. Next, I would suggest you to have a beer or a soft drink, uh, maybe a slice of pizza as well at Terrassa Salt. The prices are very good. They are located just next to a very huge swimming pool and also because it is kind of like on top of the hill, you have a very beautiful view overlooking the city. From there, I would suggest you to walk down all the way to the Estadio Olympic where the Olympic Games were held in 1992. You do not need to pay an entrance fee. You can just go on the stadium and check it out. And then from there, you would go even more down to the National Museum of Art in Catalonia. It's, let's say you should plan two hours, two hours and a half, depending obviously on how passionate you are about museums and uh, history. Um, but two, three hours should be enough time for you to be able to visit everything. There are some days when the entry is free, but I think it's only once per week or maybe even once or twice per month, I'm not sure. Check the timetable in advance. And also I would suggest you to purchase the ticket online so you avoid waiting in lines. The price normally is 15 euros and you need to choose your preferred time slot. So this probably would be kind of like a full day of traveling. Obviously, if you stop at the terrace, if you uh, go in the museum, if you go to the castle, take the cable car, it's like probably six, seven hours. So then I would suggest you to just 
go and relax on a terrace for dinner. It's gonna be quite a early dinner, let's say like seven. Spanish time normally dinner is like nine or ten, so this is considered early dinner. But this place, well, it's not a place, it's a street. It's called Carrer de Blay. This is the most famous tapas street in Barcelona. Normally tapas are like small dishes that you get to like purchase more of them and share with the people that you go with um, This place however apart from the tapas also has some things called pinchos Pinchos are as you're seeing now in the video a very very small like finger bite dishes um, but the thing is that one of these is like one or two euros maximum so if you get like five or six, trust me, you are already full, like you do not need more than six and then that's a dinner and it's six, seven, eight euros, a really good price, the food is super good and also instead of just having one main dish, you have these like five, six different types of very small bites and um, you just get to try different uh, parts of the Catalonian and Spanish gastronomy. Also, you're going to see this type of restaurants, pinchos restaurants throughout the city, but the best quality and the best prices are here on Carrer de Blay. This street is filled up with restaurants, uh, with terraces, and it's very lively. There are many local people because it's not a very touristic area, and you just get to choose whichever terrace you want. The thing is, most of the times they are quite busy, so Arriving earlier is definitely a plus because you wouldn't have to wait in line. My favorite is called Tashketa de Blay, but all of them are very, very, very good. So don't necessarily go to this one. This is my favorite, but you can choose whichever you want. Day number five. This day you need to start with a visit to Tibidabo. Tibidabo is hands down one of my favorite places to go to in Barcelona because first of all, the view from there is the best that you can get overlooking the city, for sure. Second of all, the, there is a cathedral and the entire ambience, it's like a cathedral combined with an amusement park. It's a very weird and strange combination, but it just creates this ambience, this vibe that you can't really find anywhere else in the city, in my opinion at least. So in order to reach Tibidabo, you need to either take a bus from Plaza Catalunya, which will cost you 3 euros, you need to pay the ticket and this doesn't run very often, it's only a few times per week so again, check the timetable in advance if there's not a bus for when you want to go, there's another option it is a bit more complicated, but in like 45 minutes you would be up there you need to take a train for a stop or two from Plaza Catalunya from there you need to switch it to a funicular that takes you up the hill and from there you need to also either walk but it's like half an hour or take a bus the bus is uh, runs right from the entrance of the funicular so you do not need to walk or anything it's right there and the advantage of this option is that you don't need to pay for any extra tickets because if you purchase the t10 card which is my recommendation for public transportation in barcelona this t10 card gives you 10 journeys for like 11 euros so it's a very very good price uh, all of these things, so the train, the funicular, the bus, all of this can be used with the T10 card. So then this is an advantage already. Once you get to the top uh, of the hill, the bus will leave you at the bottom of the cathedral. What I would recommend is to pay 4 euros for the elevator inside the cathedral to go all the way to the top. If you look at this picture, this is how the cathedral looks like. By taking this elevator, you get to see Barcelona from literally where the statue is on the very top. It is like 600 meters above sea level. If you're afraid of heights, I am also, so welcome to the club. It is a bit unpleasant. I wasn't fully enjoying my time there, um, but I'm also a big believer of fighting your fears, so you should do it, but keep this in mind, it's quite high and the balcony is very like tiny and it is completely open. There are some restaurants, some cafes, you can also get, just get a glass of champagne if you want to be extra fancy, you can also enjoy the amusement park, there are several uh, things that you can uh, purchase individual tickets for, just enjoy the view, take pictures, whatever. When you're done with all of this, you take the bus 
funicular train back to Plaza Catalunya. And here I would recommend you to go to a tapas lunch at Koenig Barcelona. This is one of the most affordable and best, in my opinion, like quality price ratio tapas places in the city. I really liked it a lot. I think you can get like tapas and the drink for five or six euros, which is a really good price for the city. Basically, this restaurant is like located three minutes away from Plaza Catalina, so it's very, very close. After you're done with lunch, what I would recommend you to do is start walking towards Barceloneta. I've already included Barceloneta in uh, the first part, I think it was in day three. However, this time I'm taking you to a different restaurant, which is very, very good for paella. And also, last time I was telling you to walk from Parque Ciutadela to Barceloneta and now I'm telling you to walk from Plaza Catalunya to Barceloneta. It is completely a different uh, area and it's a very beautiful one. The walk is like one hour but listen to me, do not take the bus. You need to walk this walk. You get to go all the way through La Rambla, so you cross La Rambla from the top to the bottom and then you reach Port Vell and then you walk along the port and it's just a very beautiful area all the way up to Barceloneta and this restaurant that is called Salamanca. This is a very popular restaurant for paella, for seafood, for Spanish food. It is on the beach, the view is amazing, the people are lovely, the prices are very good, the paella is very good, so definitely go there, but again, book in advance. After dinner, I'm gonna take you to my favorite rooftop bar in Barcelona. What I would recommend you is to have dinner at like 7 p.m., be done at like half past eight, and if it's summer, the sun sets at like half past nine, so you have enough time to go all the way up to this rooftop, which is called La Terraza de les Indianes. A cocktail is approximately 12 euros, so a bit on the pricier side for sure, but you are overlooking Port Vell, you have the sunset, this is the view that you can get. I know it's awesome. Um, there is like music, the entire ambience is super, super nice. There are young people, it's, I love it there. It is nice, definitely um, include this also. I do not think that they accept reservations. When I was there last time, they didn't accept reservations. You can, you can try to give them a call and see. If not, expect a line. So if you're planning on watching the sunset at like half past nine, definitely be there at nine because you might have to wait in line for like 15, 20 minutes to go up. And now the final day, this is the extra day because it is not in Barcelona. So basically, if you're following this itinerary for the five days that I've just mentioned, you will definitely get to see the most important things in Barcelona. Now, I'm including this sixth extra day, it's a beach day in Siges, which is 35 kilometers away from the city. The reason I'm doing this is because I know many people go to Barcelona also for the sea. In my opinion, Barceloneta is not the best area to go to the beach. So that's why I am recommending you this other place. If you don't want to do that, if you're going to Barcelona in the winter or autumn, skip this day, obviously. Uh, but if you go in the summer, I would really recommend you to go to this town. This town is so gorgeous. It is very small, like you have the train station and in five minutes you're just already lying down under the sun. And this is the area where I would recommend you to go. From all the spots on the Sieges beach where I've been to, this is the one that I liked the most. There's a very cheap bar also on the beach, so if you wanna just get an iced coffee, a beer or cold water, the prices are super, super good. If you wanna get a sandwich or a hot dog, it's like three or four euros, and the beer is like, a large beer is four euros, so very decent prices. And then for lunch, I would recommend you to go to Amore restaurant um, because that's where I had actually one of the best paellas ever. I love the paella there, the one with seafood, it's really delicious and it is like 12 euros per person, which again is very, very affordable. In most restaurants, especially in Barcelona, for paella it's like almost 20 euros per person. This one, really good, really cheap, fast service. The restaurant is just next to the beach, so it's perfect for lunch. Also get a sangria cava next to it, not the red one, but the one with the sparkling wine. Uh, for summer, for being in the heat, for being on the beach, this one is a bit more refreshing. Uh, it's not that heavy, it's really good. And then 
after you're done with swimming and chilling and you're done with the beach I would suggest you to still stay for a bit in Stiges, maybe um, walk around the town for a bit, get an ice cream, but there is this bar that I would recommend you to go for mojitos, they have some very delicious ones, they are a bit more pricey, it's like 11 euros for a mojito, but this is the view that you can get from the bar, it is absolutely stunning, you're literally on top of the water, it's one of my favorite places to go to, uh, I've been there a few times and I loved it there every single time. Then you can take the train back to Barcelona and this is it, this is our itinerary, I really hope that you've enjoyed it, I hope that you're going to Barcelona and I'm sure that you're gonna have an amazing time, Barcelona is one of my favorite cities in Europe so um, and I, I also have a very special connection to this place because I've lived there but still it has so many wonderful things to offer so if you've enjoyed this itinerary if you found the information useful please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel and um, also if you have any extra questions feel free to DM me on Instagram I, I would be happy to recommend you even more restaurants or uh, more places to visit if you're staying for longer or if you're looking for something else Thanks again for watching and uh, I'll see you on my next one.